good afternoon good afternoon everyone thank you for joining us on our today's session on careers in mediation and why mediation over litigation we now welcome our speaker for today's session patrick mc filmi so his ambassador at arbitrator intelligence thank you sir for joining us without any further ado i would request sir to take over the session over to you sir okay wonderful uh thank you very much uh thank you everybody i uh, appreciate uh, your patience with our technical difficulty um so uh welcome uh good morning afternoon uh evening to everybody in different parts of the world um my name is patrick mcfillamy i am a mediator um a lawyer and an arbitrator um based in uh los angeles california uh been in uh private practice for a number of years um i mediate privately and uh in the courts um so uh welcome to our webinar uh today the topic of discussion will be uh careers in mediation and why uh mediation over um litigation so um why mediation over litigation um and what are the careers in mediation um so those two topics really um overlap with one another and at times um the differences are imperceptible um so uh what i'm going to do is i'm going to discuss uh both of those topics uh together um you may uh, see me jump back and forth but I, i think it'll be fairly easy uh to follow and i hope that you will uh, find the uh, discussion uh beneficial so um first i'd like to talk to you a little bit about the um history of uh mediation Um I think this will uh, give you some uh perspective and some context uh about mediation. Um and it may help uh, to start with a, a definition of uh me- mediation. Um so so mediation is a process uh by which the uh parties uh, attempt to resolve uh disputes or conflicts <clears throat> uh through negotiation uh and discussion. Uh, with the assistance of a third party neutral um a, a mediator um and so um disagreements uh conflicts uh disputes um they have been and will continue to be a part of our daily lives um conflict has been with us um since time immemorial um uh, there's a well-known saying that um only the dead will know the end of war uh and conflict uh At first when I when I heard this I thought well this is really um a sad reflection um on the on the state of our world um and then I began to to think about it a little bit and um I came up with you know a uh, really a couple of good questions or questions that I thought uh were on point and, and one is you know is um it because it's so easy uh to wage war or to enter into conflict or to have a dispute um or alternatively is it um is peace so difficult to achieve or ob- obtain um and i think maybe the answer to both questions um lies in the affirmative um yeah it is easy uh to get upset and to lose your temper uh, to lose your composure um and to get angry and um, perhaps even violent um I'm certain that there are days that everyone felt that they didn't um acquit themselves um uh, in the way that they would have liked. Um we'd all probably like to have a a do over um if we could. Um and this is the case even with people um who are trained in conflict resolution. Um in dealing with disputes, uh with conflicts, uh with very tense um situations. So even if you, you know, you you do have that kind of training it's very easy easy to get pulled down into the um uh conflict rabbit hole and um sometimes when, when that happens it's 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 difficult to um regain your composure or to get out and um you know oftentimes you're going to need a third party uh to sort of intervene and to uh, try to achieve a, a resolution um so individual rights um responsibilities uh perspectives uh desires understandings concerns um these have all played a uh role in the development of our uh society and and law um uh, conflict has also played a significant role 
um, in the development of our society and law. Um, history is, of course, uh, replete with examples of conflict um, that have, um, you know, been been with us from the very beginning. Um, we we can reflect on the Magna Carta uh, in the 1600s, uh, the Declaration of Independence in the 1700s, uh, civil civil rights legislation um, in, in our country, and um, and, and so forth. So um, throughout history, um, we've seen conflict, but a lot of these conflicts have um, turned into good things. So in effect, um, the struggle is, is kind of necessary. And oftentimes you will hear a mediator say, um, conflict is a good thing. And that would seem counterintuitive, but um, in a way you kind of want the storm uh, so that you can enjoy the, uh, the quiet afterwards. Um, but you're going to need the help of a third party uh, to try to keep the storm uh, from getting out of control, uh, to try to contain it and to try to uh, find common ground and uh, a way to resolve it. Um, so these advancements and civil rights and achievements in social justice uh, didn't come into um, existence without a struggle, as you can see. Um, there was there was there was a, a kind of a bloody war with the Magna Carta. There was obviously a civil war in the United States. Um, uh, there was a, a war for independence, um, and there were marches and um, riots and just all, all kinds of um, um, brutality that went on um, in the civil rights uh, struggle before uh, legislation was implemented and before the uh, principles of uh, civil rights um, became more widely accepted in, in our society. Um, so um, it's taken, we've seen conflict um, since the beginning and over centuries and even up, up through today. Uh, so it's, it's really a, a part of our whole um, human struggle. And it's definitely a part of the uh, legal tradition of, um, many of the world's systems of jurisprudence. Um, and uh, in those systems of jurisprudence, uh, there are mechanisms, mechanisms for resolving conflicts. Um, there is a dispute resolution, which is typically um, litigation. And then there's alternative dispute resolution, uh, which mainly consists of uh, mediation, uh, negotiation, and arbitration. Um, so um, in this conflict um, among the world's um, cultures and populations, um, it's, re it's really ubiquitous. I mean, I, I don't think you can find a place on earth where there's not, um, or where they haven't had a conflict or where they haven't had a dispute or, you know, just a, a fight, so to speak. Um, and this is true, whether it's state to state, state to person, uh, entity to entity, person to person, or any, any combination of, of these, these things. And so um, in theory, um, these uh, disputes often uh, emerge from uh, differences of opinion or just simply from a misunderstanding. You know, uh, oh, I thought you were gonna be here at a certain time or I thought you were gonna do this. Um, but apparently um, you had a, a different understanding. So when you don't have this meeting of the minds or, you know, when you present something in a way that may be misunderstood or that's culturally different, um, oftentimes it's misunderstood or it's perceived incorrectly. And as a result, um, a conflict or a dispute um, results. Um, individual conflicts are, are time consuming. Um, even, even the smallest uh, thing can, um, you be, can become embroiled in the conflict and, and pull down the rabbit hole. Um, and once that happens, I mean, it's really uh, emotionally draining. It, it, it's actually, uh, it's very, very de debilitating. Um, you, can, you know, start off the day with, you know, enormous uh, unbridled en energy and then, you know, 
a conflict can just um, sap or, or, or drain all of your energy. Um, so it's, it's very debilitating. It's very time consuming. Um, and it actually just really consumes our whole person. Um, and so, so they force um, us um, to interact with people um, who may not be, you know, are on our preferred list of people. Um, they may not be our list of friends, colleagues, or acquaintances. Um, but, um, you know, as a um, productive member of society, um, we have to and, and we need to be able to uh, interact with people, you know, in a amicable, uh, professional um, type of way. Um, one, one thing we know about conflict um, is, is really a tremendous waste of time, um, tremendous waste of resources, um, and um, rarely do good things come out of conflict, um, with the exception of some of the um, examples that I gave you, um, Magna Carta, Declaration of Independence, Civil Rights, and so forth. Um, but, but as a general rule, um, conflicts aren't seen as a good thing. And um, as a society uh, in general, uh, worldwide, um, we tend to think that it's better to uh, try to be able to get a handle on these conflicts, um, to contain them, and to um, resolve them in some fashion that's acceptable uh, to both sides. Um, Conflicts, I said, you know, aren't new. Um, they certainly have, they've been around um, just about forever. Um, so um, conflicts have really been a focus of states, entities, and individuals uh, since the beginning. Um, and, and societies um, often consider them um, collectively um, as a very costly endeavors, um, conflicts, uh, very taxing. Uh, they can tax your patients um, and they can tax your resources. Um, they can lead to war and you know, war, war leads to, to, to many, many bad things. Uh, destruction, famine, um, and so dislocation um, and so forth. Um, so if we have a choice between um, a good day and a bad day, I, I think all of us will um, take the good day. And um, if we're having a bad day, I think all of us you know, look forward to, to, to seeing, seeing better times. And so and that's true uh, with litigation, too, um, because once you get into it, um, sometimes the litigation takes a, a life of its own. And in effect, um, you kind of lose control of it um, because you the, the dynamic between all the parties, the litigants, um, the court, the courtroom, uh, the judge, the personnel there, uh, maybe even the audience, if it's a you know, a case of interest. Um, so you often kind of lose control of the litigation uh, once once you get into it. Um, so, um, you know, getting into a litigation or getting into a conflict or going to war um, is never, um, you know, a simple or easy decision. And, and a lot of times we are don't really make a cognizant decision to um, enter into a conflict. Um, sometimes we just kind of, lose it, so to speak. Um, but as a mediator, you, you learn tools and, and ways um, to react. So, you know, it, it, you decide to get angry or you decide to, to not get angry. Uh, you decide to be diplomatic or you decide not to be diplomatic. Um, and with a little bit of training and self-reflection, um, those goals are achievable. Um, so the, the structure, um, ADR or alternative dispute resolution um, or online dispute resolution, which is um, uh, another form of um, alternative dispute resolution, um, is, is gaining traction uh, throughout the world. Um, since the pandemic, um, we've seen ODR, online dispute resolution, um, just explode. It just, it's taken off. Um, like you wouldn't believe or, or like probably people wouldn't have predicted um, or predicted that it would come to fruition quite this quickly. But um, I think that ODR and ADR are here to stay. And I think that ODR, you'll start to see um, that become the more dominant um, form of alternative uh, dispute resolution. 
Um, so the structure of ADR is similar in some ways uh, to litigation. You probably noticed that um, in your studies and in, in your careers. Um, if you're you know, in the legal profession or you've been involved uh, in litigation or um, you know, with a law, then you, you probably you've seen that and you can see that there's overlap. Um, and um, the, the, the key is to be able to um, delineate the differences and to be able to separate emotion from fact and law and then to be able to um, um, use those tools to proceed to, to a, a reasoned, um, uh, equitable type of resolution. Um, as we'll discuss a little bit later on um, during this webinar, um, there are stark differences, though, between the two methods of um, conflict resolution, uh, litigation, and um, alternative dispute resolution. Um, so a form of mediation has been used informally um, in many parts of the world um, from the beginning of time uh, or recorded history uh, until now. The thing is that although um, mediation has been used informally and in different um, forms and mechanisms uh, throughout history, um, it hasn't been legalized, so to speak. Um, in many parts of the world um, until modern times. And I think societies um, are starting to see um, the enormous benefits of, of mediation. Um, and you're starting to see uh, mediation, um, aspects of mediation at least codified um, in legislative schemes throughout the world. Um, so as I said, um, a form of mediation has been used informally in parts of the world um, from ancient times. Um, just historically, um, the origins of uh, ADR can be traced back to uh, 500 uh, BC or BCE uh, when India used a um, ADR system uh, called uh, Panchayat system. And in 1000 uh, BCE, uh, European law merchants um, had their own um, um, system for um, resolving mercantile um, disputes. Um, I'll give you a few more dates just to, so you'll kind of appreciate um, that mediation really has been around just, just for almost forever. Uh, in 14 BCE, uh, the ancient uh, Egyptians, um, um, they employed uh, diplomacy in, in foreign affairs. Um, in uh, 1263, uh, King Alfonso the Wise of Spain, what a name, right? <laughs> Wouldn't you want to be, um, be known as wise or peaceful or peacemaker? Um, King Alfonso uh, used a system of, of binding arbitration. That's in, 16, in 1263. Uh, the Irish, on the other hand, um, made the first uh, formal provision for arbitration in 1632. Uh, in 1770, the first president of the United States, uh, George Washington, uh, included an arbitration clause uh, in his last uh, will and testament. Um, that, that, that really is an enormous statement right there to, to show you uh, the importance of having um, a uh, dispute resolution uh, mechanism. Um, and, and so the first president of the United States um, realized the importance uh, especially after being the uh, leader of the Cong uh, Continental Congress and having fought um, a war of independence, um, he served as the president. The first, he was the first president, uh, served for eight years, and then um, stepped, stepped down, uh, became a gentleman farmer, and um, you know lived out his life um, in, in Virginia. But uh, he recognized um, the importance of a way to resolve conflicts. And even in something as quotidian or as everyday uh, as a will, you know, when someone dies, um, they have a will to uh, express their uh, last will and what they want to do with their property. I, I want to give it to X, Y, or Z. And if A, B, and C start to fight about it, um, then we have a mechanism by which we can resolve a dispute uh, to wit an arbitration clause. Um, Another um, historical figure in prominent in U.S. history, um, 
General Howard. Uh, he introduced arbitration provisions uh, and em employment arrangements uh, between former slaves and former slave owners in 1886 after the um, Civil War uh, was fought to um, end, end slavery uh, in this country. Uh, in 1888, uh, the U.S. Congress passed the first ADR Act, uh, which was intended to uh, resolve rail, railroad uh, labor disputes. So as you can see, um, just from this sort of brief um, summary uh, of historical events, ADR has been with us um, for a long, long time. And uh, leaders um, from Alfonso the Wise, uh, to um, you know, the President of the United States, to, to the US Congress, have all understood um, the importance of, of, of a way to um, get out of a, a conflict, um, to, to, to resolve a conflict. Uh, you've probably all seen movies where you've seen uh, this leader wanting to sue for peace. So imagine suing for peace. So in other words, um, filing a lawsuit to um, gain peace. Um, in a way, that's what lawsuits are about, um, but typically they're looked at, in, okay, we're trying to um, uh, either obtain damages or some type of performance or to prevent um, some type of um, conduct, to enjoin uh, conduct or enjoin uh, forcing somebody to do something. Um, so, I mean, you, you, you see those, those, those things um, and, and you know that um, you really need to, to have some kind of um, mechanism um, that, that can be an alternative to uh, litigation, to fighting. Um, so um, let's turn our focus now to dispute resolution uh, versus alternative dispute resolution. So um, litigation um, broadly is, or, or dispute resolution, um, subsumes litigation. So in other words, uh, they're, they're synonymous terms. Um, whereas alternative dispute resolution is an alternative um, to, to litigation, to fighting, um, to, to going to court. In, in, in um, English, um, a lot of our language is, was derived from Latin and um, litigation comes from, from lit litigare, which, which means to fight, <laughs> literally to fight. So uh, when you're litigating, in, in essence, you're fighting uh, with paper, generally. Sometimes um, the conflicts do, do get physical, but generally it's just paper wars. Um, and certainly they're emotional. there's emotional input and they're emotionally draining. Um, they also can, can drain your time and your other resources. Um, so the main mechanisms for ADR are mediation, negotiation, and arbitration is, is probably most of you know. Um, so mediation, which is the focus, uh, part of the focus of our discussion today, uh, is essentially a uh, de decision-making mechanism um, in which the parties are aided by a third party uh, who tries to facilitate a um, resolution or a settlement of the conflict or dispute and to achieve a mutually beneficial outcome. So if you just look at that, um, sort of definition, another alternate, another definition of mediation. You can just see from that the uh, differences and the advantages and the benefits of, over uh, litigation. Um, it's essentially a decision-making mechanism. So it's not a fighting type of mechanism. It's a, a mechanism by which the parties actually try to collaborate and, and work together um, to solve a problem you know, the, the conflict um, and to achieve an outcome that's mutually uh, beneficial um, or, or acceptable. It, you know, sometimes we say a good settlement is when both sides kind of feel that they got nudged a little bit, um, which means each side kind of gave a little bit. You give a little bit to gain a little bit. And, you know, you may not get everything you want and they may not, but in the end, you're able to achieve an outcome that's acceptable um, and that, you know, achieves the peace. So um, that just from that very um, small portion of the definition of mediation, you can see an enormous um, advantage and benefit 
of mediation over uh, litigation. Uh, going back to that definition again, um, it's a decision-making mechanism in which the parties are aided by a third party uh, who tries to facilitate a resolution or a settlement uh, and achieve a mutually beneficial outcome. Well, in, in, in a sense, um, so does a judge, right? Or so does an arbitrator in an arbitration. Um, but there's some fundamental differences. Um, a, a judge or an arbitrator really is not a facilitator, but rather an evaluator. Um, somebody who's judging right or wrong, uh, calling balls and strikes, you know, uh, left and right, you know, good or bad. Um, all of these, you know, dichotomies, um, um, you know, just differences, um, you know, good and bad. Whereas the um, mediator third party is not trying to make a judgment. Um, generally not trying to evaluate, you know, uh, the rights or the wrong, right or wrong, uh, rights or duties, um, you know, who, who did what or, or, or what, or didn't do what. Um, so the mediator is this third party who's not really a fact finder, who's not really an evaluator, um, who's not saying, okay, you're wrong, you're right, or, you know, uh, you're going to get, uh, you're going to lose in court, um, you know, badly or, or what have you, but rather is a person who's trying to facilitate the dialogue or the negotiation between, you know, the two parties. And then there can be more than two parties in that complex litigation. Uh, you know, there can be 10, 15, 20 people in a construction uh, defect litigation uh, case. You can see um, just phalanxes of lawyers, <laughs> um, you know, at council table. Um, fighting over, over various aspects of, of the litigation. And eventually even those cases um, get resolved in, in mediation. Um, statistically in the United States, um, about 98% of the cases in state courts um, are resolved by settlement. And the vast overwhelming majority of those are resolved by mediation. Occasionally uh, some are resolved by negotiation between the parties and often even in, in a mediation, the parties are able to talk to each other, uh, maybe even have a third party um, support type of person. Um, so with mediation is, is really just very, very flexible. Um, I often say that the mediation is really just limited by the parties or the meet and, and the mediators imagination. So, you know, really, we have a very big lane within the work, within which to work um, in, in mediation. Whereas in litigation, um, it's usually very tightly controlled. Uh, judge is definitely the boss, and he, want, he or she wants you to know that from the beginning. Um, and they're, just, they're just the decision maker. Um, you're there, um, and they're going to tell you what's right or wrong. Uh, they're going to sustain or overrule, you know, your objections. Um, decide what evidence to admit, what not to admit, what the jury can hear, what the jury cannot hear, um, and, and so on. So in, in, in effect, um, in these litigated cases, um, a jury only really gets to hear what the judge decides they should hear. And a lot of that's decided by rules of evidence. Um, you know, this piece of evidence may be more, um, less probative than it is um, prejudicial. And so the judge may say, no, we're not letting it in. Whereas in a mediation, you know, everything can be on the table. Um, the one, I don't think it's a difference, but even though everything's on the table, um, one of the mantras, at least in, in mediation is, um, you know, respect, um, civility. So yeah, speak your mind, say your piece, uh, but do it in a diplomatic fashion. You know, um, shed light, not heat. Um, th those are some of the things. Be hard on the problem, um, but easy on the person. And I think we all know um, if we say, oh, you did this or you didn't do that, um, sometimes that, that'll rub people the wrong way. And, and you'll get into a dispute just, just from the way you present something. 
So um, we try to be hard on the problem, easy on the person, focusing on the problem. Well, that wasn't done. Not you didn't do it. Um, you know, that hurt me, not you hurt me. Uh, that caused me damages, not you caused me damages. And those differences may seem to be distinctions without differences. But, you know, I think you can all appreciate that when you get into a discussion that sort of becomes heated and may become a dispute or, or a conflict, um, the way you say things are, are extremely important. Um, it's almost more important than the content. So, you know, in, in a way, exalting form over substance is, is critical um, in discourse, um, in exchange between people. Um, of course, content matters, um, facts matter, uh, but the way you present them is critical. Um, if you present them in the wrong way or in a confrontational or an aggressive way, um, it's in all likelihood, it's the other side will just shut down or they will become defensive. Um, and the, um, discussion will be more about I'm right and you're wrong or trying to prove I'm right and you're wrong or vice versa, rather than to try to explore, um, you know, mutually um, acceptable or mutually favorable solutions. Um, so it, it's really becomes in, in litigation, I think, a, um, a, a test of egos, a test of wills, uh, a, a war of wills, um, so to speak. And it's often a zero sum game, which means winner takes all, loser nothing. Um, and, you know, in, in these kind of win lose situations, um, it's just natural that not everybody's going to be happy. Um, and in the litigation, you're going to have a winner and a loser. It's, it's just the way, the way the nature of it is. It's, it's, it's like a game um, and so forth. So um, at this point, um, we can um, take a few questions if you'd like. Um, so um, if you'd like to weigh in, uh, feel free to do that, and I'll be happy to answer. Uh, everyone, can you hear me? Yes, sir. OK, wonderful. Uh, any, any questions? Uh, uh, yes, sir. Oh, sure, please. Uh, yes, sir. So the first question is, how mediation is different from arbitration? Ah, that's a good question. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, um, mediation, arbitration, and negotiation are the uh, three main types of alternative dispute resolution. Um, mediation and arbitration. Um, arbitration is more like litigation than, media than mediation. Um, it's different from litigation. Arbitration is different from litigation. Um, in a number of respects. First, um, at least initially, when it, it, it gained popularity uh, worldwide, it, it was cheaper. Now it's not. Um, now it's, it, it's become very expensive and it's become a very lucrative um, uh, aspect of the whole legal um, profession. Um, it is uh, more streamlined than, let's say, a litigation, um, an arbitration is like a trial. Um, there is some, there is an adversarial nature to it. Um, sometimes the presentations are just done by submission. In other words, a written submission. Um, sometimes there's a right to cross-examine on the written submission. Um, generally arbitrators let in almost everything. Um, there, there are very few objections. And when there are objections, they're rarely sustained. Um, because one thing, arbitrators, their awards are subject to review uh, by courts. So as an arbitrator, I can tell you, we're very, very careful uh, about staying within our lane um, and not you know, overstepping our boundaries um, and, and, and staying within the um, arbitration process. Um, the arbitrator is supposed to be a neutral in a way. He's, he's a third party. He's not supposed to take sides. But well, that's the same as a judge, right? Um, he's evalu evaluative, which is the same as a judge. Um, whereas I said in mediation, in mediation, there are typically three styles of mediation. Um, today, the most prevalent, most popular style is facilitative, which is what I talked about um, earlier. 
Um, then there's evaluative and then there's trans transformative or transformational. Um, so we know facilitative is the mediator's a third party. He's a neutral, he or she. Um, he doesn't take sides. Um, he doesn't say you're right, or you're wrong. Um, at some point there is an evaluation um, because I, you know, I think as a mediator, there has to be sort of a reality check um, and parties kind of need to uh, say, oh, okay. Yeah, we're, 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 we're way, you know, in left field or um, over the top, so to speak. Um, so, I mean, in that respect, um, you know, there, there, there's definitely similarities. There's evidence taking, um, you have subpoenas, um, you have requests for protections of documents, you have all the discovery tools in arbitration that you have in um, litigation. Um, in mediation, there is none of that. There's no, first of all, there's no judge. The mediator is, you know, as I said, is a neutral, doesn't take sides, um, typically is not evaluative, um, generally uh, tries to facilitate, tries to find out what the uh, impasses are in the discussion, um, tries to find out what the underlying needs, uh, interests, and wants and desires of the parties are, and tries to see how those can be um, utilized to um, fashion a settlement or a resolution. Whereas in the um, arbitration or litigation, uh, the arbitrator or the judge um, allows evidence to be presented uh, either in the form of testimony or in written um, submissions. And there's a limited right of uh, cross-examination and um, arbitration. In litigation, um, at least in um, um, common law countries, uh, United States, uh, England, UK, UK, all the UK, our, our Australia, India, and so forth. Um, that's that's considered more or less a, um, common law. Uh, it's adversarial because it's considered to be the way to get to the truth, um, and it is useful, especially you know if you, the parties aren't uh, completely candid or forthright. Um, but so is mediation. Um, as I said, you know, mediation is where the parties have a dialogue that they sit down and they talk, um, uh, to each other. Whereas in the courtroom that the judge or, or an arbitrator won't allow you to actually address the other side. Um, typically a judge or arbitrator will say, well, would you please, you know, um, refrain from talking to the other side and kindly confine your comments, uh, to the tribunal or, or, or to the court. Um, and, um, the court is, you know, a fact finder, a mediator is not. Uh, so an arbitrator is a fact finder. Uh, media, as I said, mediator is not. Um, arbitrators and judges, um, they want to know what the law is um, and they want to apply it to the facts and then reach a conclusion. Um, in mediation, the law can be useful, sure. I mean, um, in a litigated case with uh, lawyers, um, Typically, you know, you'll see mediation briefs. Each side will, um, you know, set forth their position. They'll uh, recite uh, points and authorities, you know, and they'll make arguments and that kind of thing. And it's very useful. And the mediator will look at that and it will inform, you know, the discussion uh, to, to some extent. Um, but the mediator is not um, a fact finder, um, is not, um, you know, deciding on what evidence what can be said or not be said, um, you know, with the exception of statements that, you know, are inflammatory or they're lack, a lack civility. Uh, but even in a way, um, sometimes that can be helpful too, because you can learn things um, from, you know, um, someone who's upset. Um, so sometimes we try to put a lid on that. Sometimes we don't. A, a judge or an arbitrator will shut that down um, almost immediately. Um, and usually we'll have something to say to the parties about it, whereas a mediator will be very tactful, uh, diplomatic, you know, will say, you know, let's focus on the problem. Um, you know, that tends to divide conversation rather than to advance it. You know, and there are a lot of just um, um, set phrases and statements that we kind of use to uh, get, the, get the parties to focus back on, 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 the, on the facts, you know rather than the emotion so much. So uh, arbitrator is a fact finder. He's very much like a judge. He or she's very much like a judge. Um, 
and they evaluate uh, evidence, testimony, credibility, um, and they um, render a decision. They make the decision. Um, so they decide, you know, um, do you win or do you win? So in other words, do you win or do you lose? Uh, and do you get what you want or, or you don't? Do you get all of what you want or like part of what you want? Or should you be even getting something different, completely different? And so in that sense, the arbitrator and the judge are big time uh, decision makers. And so when you, um, you know, cast your lot in, into those forums or fora, um, you give up control and the, the judge becomes the decision maker. Um, and sometimes the judge is not all that neutral. Um, a lot of times uh, they have a defense background. They may have worked in insurance defense or, um, you know, in a certain area of the law, they may have a certain bias and you can often see it. Um, I've seen it. Sometimes it works in my favor and sometimes against me. And sometimes we'll, you know, laugh in private and say, okay, the third lawyer, which is the black robe or the arbitrator, you know, um, is, is, is really, you know, taking these, the other person's side or the other side's side. Um, uh, Whereas a mediator, um, we don't. Um, we wouldn't last very long at all if we were biased or we took sides or, you know, we tried to manipulate the outcome. Um, not saying the judges or arbitrators do, but, you know, um, they can certainly steer the conversation in a way um, that leads to a certain outcome. Um, and sometimes it's the right outcome. Sometimes it's not. Um, but as I say, there's, all, there's almost always a winner and a loser. Um, but in mediation, we say it's win-win. Okay, why is it win-win? Um, does it mean that you know a, a party A is not going to get what they want, and party B is going to get everything they want, or vice versa? No. As I said in the beginning, it you know it's it's give and take, and in a, a good resolution or good settlement, both sides kind of feel like they got kicked in you know the back of their backside so um in other words you, you kind of feel like you, you kind of gave up something and you, you probably didn't want to but you know in, in order to get to the end to get to the goal uh you're going to do it and so um that's what mediation is and in mediation um there's really no decision um or outcome until the end um and, and so the end is when both sides say okay yeah we agree um you know on a, B, C, and D, or whatever the term sheet is. And sometimes they can be uh, very short or they can be, you know, um, uh, very, very long. It can be uh, hundreds of pages. So, I mean, it, it just really all depends on the complexity of the dispute and, and, and what's what's really at stake. But um, then the mediator helps the parties fashion an agreement. Uh, and that's similar to, uh, to arbitration or litigation. Um, frequently, um, those um, a litigation or arbitration will end in a settlement or uh, even, you know, dur during um, the litigation or the arbitration, um, something may happen or, um, you know, a party may feel, okay, this is the time, um, the best time that I have to try to settle the case. And, and so, so that'll happen. So you see settlements, you know, in, in all stages too of um, litigation and an arbitration. But um, in the end, um, that's what really counts in mediation. So you can say whatever you want. You can say, I shot the sheriff and I, I meant to do it. Um, but not a word of that can, can be, be used um, in court. So it's all confidential, um, except for if you know, you're saying you're gonna go out and kill somebody or, or commit fraud or something. So there, there are a few exceptions, um, they're statutory. But uh, by and large, uh, almost the whole thing is confidential. Um, arbitration, too, there is a confidentiality aspect of that. You can also get it in litigation if the judge is willing to allow you to um, what's called seal the record, S-E-A-L, uh, which in effect means that uh, the judge um, orders the uh, record block from public um, disclosure without court order. Or, or some or good cause or compelling reason. Um, so those are kind of the main differences or features. 
one of the, the big, big, big features, I think, or differences in arbitration and mediation is um, how the parties um, react to each other, how they deal with each other, and how they sort of end the dispute with one another. Uh, frequently in my mediation practice, um, I see people hug each other, uh, handshakes, um, every now and then people will cry and you know, you, you'll just see all kinds of things in mediation that you'll never, you, you, you may see it in arbitration or in litigation, but it's often from the stand. Um, sometimes it's genuine. Sometimes it's, you know, contrived. Um, but I, I really just see real, um, uh, emotion, real, um, very, very candid, uh, types of discussion in, in mediation, whereas in arbitration and litigation, um, the arbitrator and, and, and the judge are going to keep the discussion very focused. Um, it's going to stay um, within the four corners generally of the pleadings uh, with the exception of uh, impeachment, um, which, which, which you typically don't have in mediation. Um, you're not trying to impeach the other person's uh, credibility or character, although that may come into effect, you know, if party A is, you know, somebody who's not wed to the truth and, and party B um, you know, just, just, just can't stand on a person who uh, doesn't tell the truth. But um, so generally, you're, you're not going to have any of that. Um, and um, just the overall process, uh, litigants seem very, very satisfied uh, with, with, with mediation. I've done mediations in the court um, where I've seen, um, you know, parties give and take and um, I had one where it ended. Um, we can talk about what happens in mediation um, generally and in an academic fashion, but we, we can't give details because it's confidential. And as I said, usually arbitrations and mediation and litigations aren't. And so that's an enormous advantage of in mediation um, is to be able to keep everything confidential so the public, you know, doesn't know your business or, um, let's say you have a product that may be defective or something or and you don't want the whole world to know about it and you don't want it to you know um, undermine your business or even to destroy your business you know maybe it was just a one-off and, and that's just you know and, and so you want to keep that private uh mediation allows it it's totally confidential um and if you want to disclose something yeah you can but that's all by agreement of the parties so mediation is very much um, consensual um, and it's agreement driven and it's consensually driven. So if A and B decide they want to do it this way, hey, that's the way the mediation will be. Um, I've had mediations uh, outside, I've had them on the beach, um, I've had them all over the place. I mean, you're never going to see that in an arbitration. You're going to be in a lawyer's office and, you know, you're going to be at some conference in a, in a boardroom or a conference room at a conference table. And it's going to be very structured and the arbitrator is going to be in control. And, you know, you're going to treat him pretty much or her um, like you would a judge. And the proceedings are going to proceed um, pretty much the way a, uh, a trial would proceed, um, except that the arbitration is more streamlined. Um, it can be confidential. It's a little bit less expensive, not that much. Um, and so, um, I think you can see that in terms, even though, um, arbitration is an ADR mechanism, it really more closely aligns itself to litigation, uh, rather than mediation, but it does have some of the features. So I know that was a long answer, <laughs> but I hope it, um, was, was useful. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, so the next question is, uh, do we need any I mean, like extra degree to be a mediator or just our like law, the degree we got from our law school, that, that is enough? No, that's there's something point. separate course or something like this to be a mediator? Yeah, excellent question. Um, it really, the, the answer is it depends. <laughs> that's not a great answer, right? Um, but it, okay, why does it depend? Uh, it depends on the jurisdiction. Um, as I said, mediation has been around since time immemorial. Um, and I mentioned a, a lot of, um, places and, uh, very important people, you know, who 
um, uh, espoused mediation and you know, supported it. Um, so in the beginning, no, there, there, there was no education. Um, it, it probably really depended on the person's diplomatic skills, their interpersonal skills, um, IQ, more importantly, EQ, emotional quotient or emotional um, intelligence. Um, there are all kinds of intelligence, right? There's intelligence, intelligence, there's emotional intelligence, there's situational intelligence, there's conflict intelligence, and you can just Google it and you could probably develop your own and write books and, and make, make lots of money. Um, so, but yeah, there, there's certainly um, a, a lot of that out there. Um, in, in the U.S., um, we have 50 states and then we have the uh, federal jurisdiction and then we have a number of territories. So essentially we have 50 um, different systems of jurisprudence, although um, the state laws are often very similar. Uh, federal law is um, preemptory in, in, in a lot of respects. Um, and then there's, con there's, all, there's constitutional law and there's just all these layers of law. Um, but for ADR um, in California, um, by statute, by law, you're not required to, to have any any kind of degree or uh, really any kind of training. Um, but as a practical practical matter, nobody would um, hire you or allow you to even volunteer your time um, unless you had taken um, the the basic course. And the basic course in the United States is is a forty hour course. Um, it's typically um, it's taught in a number of venues. Um, it's taught by people like myself, it's taught by lawyers, by judges, uh, by mediators, um, by academics. Um, and some of them have law degrees and some of them don't. Some of them are lawyers and some of them are not. Um, so in California, uh, by law, you don't have to have a degree. You, re you really don't have to have any training. But as I said, as a practical matter, you have to have at least the 40 hours. And more importantly as a practical matter you probably wouldn't be very much of a mediator um unless you have some experience you know and one of, one of the ways to get experience is to volunteer and to go into the courts um, and volunteer your services and um i hope i'll get a question if i don't i'll, I'll talk about that a little bit as, as, when i wrap up um some states some states in the united states do require um a certain education uh and continuing education I know um, certain mediator panels, um, which mediators want to join or to be a part of so that they can get cases and so that they can mediate. Um, and so they exercise their profession, their skills and, um, you know, earn, earn a living. Um, so, so that they want to be on panels. They want to um, have taken courses, uh, you know, to have gotten certificates, uh, perhaps even degrees. Uh, you know, in, in higher learning. Um, universities uh, worldwide now are offering um, uh, degrees, master's degrees, PhDs um, in dispute resolution, uh, arbitration, mediation, negotiation. Uh, Harvard is obviously famous for um, starting um, um, negotiation and mediation here in the United States in the early 80s. And from that point, it, it kind of took off here, um, became very popular. In the courts, um, there was never really a legislative scheme here uh, to, to regulate um, mediation. But in a way, um, the judiciary and the legislative the legislators kind of decided and realized that it was probably better not to uh, codify it. Um, and we've had this, this discussion uh, for decades now, up, up, up until the very the present. Uh, should, should there be a legislative scheme? Should it be codified? Should there be a minimum standard? Should there be continuing education? All, all those same questions or many of them um, that, that you, know, you just asked. Um, and invariably in many jurisdictions, the answer has been uh, no. Uh, because by trying to codify it, by trying to um, structure it, you know, to put it in, in you know, a lane, uh, in effect, you defeat some of the um, benefits of mediation that you that you don't have um, in dispute resolution or even in other uh, forms of alternative dispute resolution. So by not doing that, it just kind of allows 
um, it to be a multidisciplinary um, type of endeavor where you definitely have a lot of psychology, um, law, uh, negotiation, uh, diplomacy, um, just everything. It takes in the whole gambit of your intelligence. And I said emotional intelligence, intelligence, conflict intelligence, and just, you know, there's just so many types of intelligence. Like there's so many types of strength, you know, there's endurance, there's, you know, people who can lift 1,000 pounds, the people who can run 26 miles. So, you know, there's different types of strengths and there's different types of uh, intelligence. And so um, in ADR, by not having so much of a structure, so much regulation, such a much of a straight jacket, we have this really wide open process that um, uh, it's just uh, allows for so much to happen and to be able to happen um, that it's just really conducive uh, to fostering settlement. Um, so generally it's um, a degree is not required, although you do see it. Um, and if you have somebody with a PhD, you know, from XYZ school, you know, with arbitration, you know, you might favor them to, you know, um, this person who, who hasn't taken any courses or, or maybe he's only taking the basic course. Um, but maybe this person who took the basic course is the smartest guy since, you know, uh, Einstein or, you know, or, or Marie Curie. And, you know, they haven't had a course at all. Um, I, I can tell you um, in, in one of the schools I went to, um, one of the guys was reading for a PhD. He had never, never had a degree in his whole life. Um, but it was probably one of the smartest people that I think I've ever met. So, I mean, the degree doesn't make you and doesn't guarantee you and doesn't mean that you'll be the best mediator, but it, it helps, you know. Um, my grandmother used to say, you know, a nice suit of clothes don't make the person, but they sure help, you know. Um, if I came here in a pair of, you know, dirty uh, blue jeans and a T-shirt as opposed to, you know, a suit and tie, you might have a different um, um, perception of me. So, you know, those, those things kind of matter. But um, in mediation, we don't look so much um, to, you know, the degrees or your education. Um, but obviously, we can tell if you're, um, you know, a student of mediation or negotiation. And, you know, you, you have these skills and you're able to uh, work through um, seemingly intractable um, disputes or conflicts. So, um, you know, you talk about a, a mediator or an arbitrator. Uh, when we had 9-11 here, you know, um, I think it was Feinstein. He's one of, one of the, the most famous mediators of all. Uh, he made, mediated the resolution um, of the um, settlement sums and who would get what and, and so on. And so I mean, you, you see mediation just in really all aspects of um, society and law and, and, and in life. Um, so, yeah, uh, I would encourage you to uh, be a student of mediation and negotiation. It's useful in every aspect of your life, whether it's the boardroom, the courtroom, or, or whatever room you're in. Um, those skills are just, they're, 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 they're more useful than all of the knowledge I, I, I think that I've acquired. And there's been a lot, and I've got, a, you know, a lot of paper, and I've got a box full of diplomas. <laughs> I don't have wall space for them. Uh, but I, I think the skills that I've learned in mediation and how to deal with conflict and how to control my emotions um, are just priceless. You know, for everything else, there's MasterCard. So I hope I answered that question. Yes, yeah, sir. Thank you so much for the wonderful session. We would like to conclude the session. Thank you, sir, for sparing time out of your busy schedule and to place the session with knowledge and information. Thank you, sir. It was indeed a very insightful and enlightening session. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. I hope everybody enjoyed.